What's up, everybody? Bassmaster Elite Series Pro Cole Sands here. This is the fish report for June 5th, 2023. Let's get into this week's report. So this week's report is brought to you by one of my awesome sponsors, Nitro Boats and Bass Pro Shops, East Ridge, Tennessee. That's where I got my Nitro from. Uh, both of them, man, Bass Pro and East Ridge, they got a great group of people working down there. Their, their Nitro department and their tracker service sales department is awesome. I'm um, really a great store overall. But just a reminder, my Z21XL will be for sale at the end of the year if anybody's interested in it. Uh, be sure to either let me know or let the people at Bass Pro Shops in East, East Ridge know. Uh, David Hickman will definitely hook you up uh, when it comes to um, buying that boat if you're interested. Like I said, I have absolutely loved that boat. Been uh, the best boat I've ever been in. So I'm definitely jealous of whoever gets it. But uh, got some exciting news. So this will actually be my last fishing report on my YouTube channel. But before you get scared, and you know, sad that I said that, I will be transferring my fishing reports over to a new platform called Fishing for Dummies. And I'm gonna leave the link in the bio. And what this is gonna allow me to do is do a lot more of an in-depth fishing report for y'all. Um, and it's it's it, the, there is a monthly fee, it's not much, it's 15 bucks a month, which is, I mean, you're gonna spend that much on a crankbait. But with this, there's going to be th two or three weekly reports of when I'm going out there in the water, uh, just little adjustments I made throughout the day to have a little successful day or, you know, a little better day. Um, you know, something that might have made my day a little bit more successful. Little bait changes, little intricate details. And it's going to be a lot more up to date. Um, so, you know, I'll be going out there, giving a quick four or five minute recap, um, you know, two to three times a week. And then once a week, I'll be doing the same fish report, except it's going to be more in depth. I'm going to be doing more map study, actually pulling up um you know, mapping, kind of explaining, like right now it's ledge season. These fish are pushing out to the ledges and kind of explain the travel patterns of them. And it's going to be a lot more visual, uh, like I said, a lot more in depth and it's only 15 bucks a month. And if you just want to do it for a month, you're just coming into town for a month, just subscribe for a month. Um, and then you can cancel after that. But, you know, I think this is going to be something that's going to be really cool. Something that will really help y'all out as the consumers. And it's going to allow me to go a lot more in depth, share a couple more of my secrets that I just might not necessarily give away on YouTube. But if y'all subscribe to this, uh, y'all are going to get some serious, seriously good stuff. Um, so definitely, you know, it's great if you can go on a guide trip with me. And uh, But if you can't, you know, I'm too booked up, definitely I would suggest this. Or if, if you can't go on a guide trip and you just want to get up-to-date information, you know, you're coming into town for, you know, for a tournament or whatever. Uh, like I said, fishingfordummies.com. I will leave the link in the bio. Um, y'all click on it, subscribe, and uh, I'm going to give away some really good stuff on that. So y'all be sure to subscribe. But uh, yeah, let's get into this week's report. So it is June 5th. Just got back from my Sabine River tournament. Um, but I was fishing the lake a ton right before I left. Had some awesome guide trips. I mean, we were having 50 to 80 fish days. I think one day we had 84 fish. And really this time of year from May, end of May to about 1st of July, most of my guide trips are pretty similar as far as we're going after the deep bite. The ledge bite is hot right now. That's definitely the what I want to be doing because it's groups of fish. You're not fishing for individual fish. There's, you know, um, a lot of baits and different ways to catch them. But uh, what I, um, what was most successful for me, and, you know, I've been keeping up with some of the other guides and kind of, uh, making sure it's the same pattern going, which it definitely is full blown. It's it's a ledge deal. But what was, what was really working for us, I just kind of want to run through it, um, show you what I was seeing out there. And then, uh, like I said, I'm going to be out there um, a bunch this is upcoming week guiding. And then going forward, um, all this information is going to be on Fishing for Dummies. And uh, I'm going to be giving away, like I said, some really good stuff. And uh, I'm going to be guiding probably... I don't know, 25 trips over the next month. So I'm going to be on the water a lot. So I should be able to give away some really awesome information. But uh, yeah, let's talk about what was working before I left. So we had, um, it seemed like there wasn't a whole lot of current, which I've been kind of keeping track of the current uh, schedule with TVA's app, um, which makes the bite a little bit tougher a lot of times. A lot of times the morning bite first thing is decent and the afternoon bite's really good when they start pulling current. But they weren't pulling a whole lot of current when, when I was here right at the end of May. And uh, it's the same way now. But what that did, it seemed like as soon as you'd pull up to a spot, the fish would be grouped up pretty good. You could pick up a hardcore crankbait. We caught some giant fish on it. Um, throwing the 5 plus and the 7 plus. Blue Sexy Shad is always my go-to color. Um, anytime I'm deep cranking, especially on the Tennessee River, uh, it's just a color they don't see a lot. It's kind of an off-white Got a little strip of chartreuse, a little blue in it. 
Um, so it's not quite like the traditional sexy shad. It's kind of close to it, but it's, it's just kind of more of a, like I said, kind of like an off-white. Uh, throwing that on a 710 heavy action Witch Doctor Tackle Kahuna Rod. This is an all glass rod, got a great tip on it. 710, so you can launch this crankbait a mile. Uh, 12 pound Yozuri T7 fluorocarbon. Uh, you want to use about 12 pound on it. I can get that crankbait down about 18 foot. Um, I can go down to 10, maybe get it down to closer to 20, especially on a long cast. Uh, but you know, on a normal cast, I'm getting it down 16 to 18 foot. Um, and then what I noticed with that crankbait, as soon as you pull up, the school would be grouped up pretty good and you could catch them on that crankbait. Like if that was the first bait you threw in there, you'd catch a couple and they were usually big ones. You know, you could get them going. And if, if you know, if you and a client or both your clients could get, get in there and just keep them going, you could catch, you know, three to six fish and they were all good fish. And uh, like I said, that five plus was really good for that, that depth range of like 10 to 18. Um, but once I got out there a little bit deeper, if I was seeing fish out there in 18 to 25 foot of water, um, that hardcore crank seven plus, and uh, what's cool about both these crankbaits, there's a weight transfer system in it. It's called the bullet crank. And that weight transfer goes from the front of that crankbait to the back when you cast it. And that's why you can throw this crankbait a lot better than any other crankbait out there. Um, as you can tell, it's a lot bigger profile crankbait, which really matches the gizzard shot on the Tennessee River. Uh, same way with the line, I usually throw 12. I will throw 14 on this sometimes. Uh, but typically, you know, making a long cast with this, I'm getting this crankbait down 25 foot. Um, even, you know, I've thrown it sometimes on a super long cast and I can get it down 28 to 30 foot. Um, that's not even long line in it, but that's on a, that's on a really long cast, but, uh, that's really key. You know, these fish, they get off the tips of these underwater islands, these underwater points. And, um, I'll be going over that in next week's report on, uh, the fishing for dummies platform. But, uh, I'll kind of show you what, what I'm talking about with these under, underwater points and channel swings and, and underwater island tips and stuff like that but they get off the ends of them in that 20 to 30 foot range. And um, when they get out there, you know, that that traditional, you know, five plus size hardcore, a lot of people like throw a 5XD or 6XD. Um, and there's a lot, of, you know, the dredgers and stuff. They just don't quite get there. But with that seven plus bullet crank, you know, I can get that thing down there like 30 foot so it catches them. But uh, both those crankbaits, we caught some really big fish on um, right before I left to go to the Sabine. Um, but then kind of our tried and true I had a young man, a client, uh, it was actually really cool. I had a father and two sons. Uh, one day, the uh, one of the sons went, it was the father and one of the sons. The other day, it was the father and the other son. And we caught a bunch of fish both days. But one day, the, I think the older brother had to outdo the younger brother. He caught his personal best on the Fishco uh, Green Pumpkin Blue Swirl, six inch finesse worm um, on a drop shot. Uh, caught a seven and a half pounder. The kid was so fired up and it was an awesome fight. It fought, 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 came up and jumped and came off and actually caught the fish in the net before it came back in the water. Uh, but we were all like, super excited. Uh, definitely one of my highlights of my guiding career so far. Um, but as far as the setup goes, um, seven, two, witch doctor tackle, uh, medium series spinning rod. This is one of his little custom spinning rods that he makes that weighs like an ounce. I mean, this thing weighs seriously nothing. Um, throwing that on Yozuri, uh, 10 pound braid to a 10 pound Yozuri T7 fluorocarbon leader. I'm pretty much always using 10 pound on Chickamauga. Uh, you can go down to eight or six, but on Chickamauga, it's just full of so many big fish. Uh, I usually want to go with 10 pound line. Uh, as far as the drop shot weight goes, usually a quarter or a three eighths, um, out deep. I like a three eighths. A quarter is a little bit more versatile if you want to go shallow and throw it. Um, with not a whole lot of current, the, you can definitely get away with a quarter, but usually three eighths is kind of what I go to out deep on the ledges. But like I said, that green pumpkin blue swirl worm is definitely uh, one of my go-tos on a drop shot right now. And then another one of my favorites that we're gonna be catching a ton of fish on and already have caught a lot of big fish on is the Nico rig. You know, when there's not a whole lot of current, there's not really another bait out there that looks quite as natural as that. And this is the same worm as the last one. So this is the eight inch version. This is the eight inch fish go finesse worm, uh, green pumpkin blue swirl still, still, you know, kind of my favorite color. And we caught some on the green pumpkin, Texas red from fish go as well. And some other colors, but throwing that on a Nico rig, just a little, I use a number one or a number two Nico hook. You don't need a big hook, put an O-ring on there. And then a three thirty second ounce nail weight, uh, shoving in the head of it. I always point the tip up because the weight's on the bottom like that. You want the tip up. 
That way when the, when the fish eats it, it goes into the roof of their mouth. Uh, same, same setup for this, 7-2, uh, wrist doctor tackle, shaman series rod, medium action, that's the shaman uh, series. And that's a super, super lightweight rod as well, extremely sensitive. Um, and I absolutely love that rod. Uh, other baits we caught some big fish on, um, a hair jig. We caught some really nice fish on a hair jig. And for this setup, I'm using 16 pound. I go a little bit lighter on my line. Um, then, you know, some other stuff like a swim bait or something, but 16 pound Yozuri T7 fluorocarbon. You want fluorocarbon cause it'll sink. It'll help that hair jig as it sinks through the water with the action. This hair jig is a little bit wet right now. It just flooded here pretty much. So it's not quite as puffed up as it usually is. But uh, like I said, 16 pound Yozuri T7 fluorocarbon. I use a high gear ratio reel with this. This is a eight one to one, I believe, or an eight seven to one. Uh, it's an eight, eight something. And that's because when I work this thing, I throw it out there, I point the rod, straight at it and up a little bit. And I reel it four or five cranks quick and then I kill it. And as it's falling, you want it to fall on a semi-slack line, you'll feel tick, and that's all you'll feel. And when he bites, you want to be able to reel that slack out of it as fast as you can and then just pull into it. You don't have to give it a hard hook set, but just get all that line out and pull into it. Uh, as far as the rod goes, 7.2 medium heavy is my go-to. This is also a Shaman series with Dr. Tackle rod. Um, but that 7.2 just, it seems like it fits perfect with that, that hair jig. Uh, you can get a long cast out there and um, definitely one of my best big fish baits in the summer. Um, it seems like you don't catch just a ton of fish on a hair jig always, but it seems like the, the ones you catch are always quality fish. And then we will go to the swim bait. Uh, I did catch some fish on a swim bait and look forward to catching more on it as my uh, trips come up soon. Um, but as far as the swim bait goes, I usually use just some type of hollow belly. Um, you can use a, a, a out, you know, a jig head that's on the outside. This is a, an internal jig head. And all I've done there is, let me show you. Super simple. Um, I just cut a little slit in the back and then it's just a jig head. I'll actually take it out so I can show you. But there's a lot of, a lot of good um, swim baits out there on the market right now. But what I do is I, um, I actually do it from the, from the start so I can show you. And as far as the jig head size goes, I usually like a three quarter ounce or even the one ounce. I'd say probably a one ounce is my go-to. But so you got your hollow belly swim bait, you know, whatever brand you like. I always like a natural color. So you're going to want to go ahead, wet the, wet the head of that jig. And then cut a little slit in the back of it about, I don't know, three inches down from the head. So you cut a little slit, you got your jig head wet. You're just going to push it in and push it to the front. And then once you get to the front of the jig head, you can kind of push that eyelet through. Sometimes you can get a pair of scissors and cut the plastic around it if it doesn't quite come out. A lot of times I'll just kind of bite the plastic around it and it'll kind of poke through. And then there you go, jig head. And the reason I do that instead of just screwing it in the, the end, which you, you can, it's perfectly fine. I just, I feel like I get a little bit better action. I feel like you get a side to side wobble out of that jig head a little bit better. Plus, I think the, uh, I know actually that you get a lot more fish out of it. It seems like uh, the fish don't tear it up quite as bad when you have it internally rigged. Um, but, you know, I just tie a little Palomar knot on there and it's good to go. As far as the line goes on, a, on the swim bait setup, and pretty much all my swim bait setups I use when it comes to, you know, big swim baits. Um, and by big, I mean anything over five inches. Uh, is 20 pound Yozuri T7 fluorocarbon. That's ready to go. But yeah, so that's just kind of a, a cool little, um, you know, setup I do with my hollow bellies. Uh, I think, I, I don't even remember who the first person to do that was. It was, I watched somebody on TV. Might've been Kevin Van Dam, I don't remember. But um, as far as the rod goes, I like a little bit longer rod and a little heavier action. I like a 7.6 Shaman Series Witch Doctor Tackle Rod, and I like a heavy action when it comes to that. Like I said, 20-pound um, fluorocarbon. Um, and then for the gear ratio, either like a 6.6 six to 1 or like a 7-something, like a 7 one one seven three to 1 And, um, you know, with this bait, you want to throw it out there, let it go to the bottom, and just slow, slow reel it. Just nice and steady. And a lot of times, they'll hit it two or three times before they get it and just keep reeling until they load up on it. And when they load up, you can pull into them. 
but definitely always have my, my swim bait tied on. And uh, we caught some fish on it right before I left. What else? Um, I love throwing a football jig in the summer, uh, like a three quarter ounce, half ounce, three quarter ounce, just depending kind of what you like. Um, 20 pound, you know, Zuri T7 fluorocarbon. I always use 20 when it comes to my jigs. Um, if I am using a finesse jig, sometimes I'll use like a micro jig in the summer, like a micro tungsten jig. I might go down to 16 pound, but whenever I'm using just a full size football jig, uh, I'm definitely using 20 pound fluorocarbon. Uh, gear ratio, seven, three to one, or even an eight. I like a faster gear ratio. Um, and then as far as the rod goes, I always throw a heavy action rod on a jig, either a seven, two shaman series, uh, which starter tackle rod or a seven, six, like I said, heavy action on both of those. And, um, as far as colors go, just anything natural. I'm a big green pumpkin guy. Uh, so I tend to go with green pumpkin. Um, and then, you know, other baits that work, you know, there's a lot of baits that can work and I, I am going to show y'all a couple little secrets, uh, in my fishing report next time. But, um, you know, a scrounger is always a good bait. This is going to be something we throw tomorrow a little bit. Usually with it, it's kind of the same deal. Either like a seven, two heavy or seven, six heavy is kind of my, my go-to. Uh, you know, and I like a big scrounger, like a one ounce, because that scrounger with that, the way that head's head is designed, it likes to rise up a little bit. Um, so I like, a, you know, a heavy, uh, heavy jig head because that'll just help it stay down there. Same way with it as the swim bait, throw it out there, let it go to the bottom, slow creep it. Um, you'll feel that thing wobbling and sometimes they, they hit it two or three times before they really load up. But just keep reeling it. As soon as your rod starts to go, that's when you can pull into them. And then last but not least, a bait that I have tied on, I don't throw it a ton in the summer, but I always have it rigged up pretty much, is the big Ben Parker spoon. Um, and the thing with this, when it first came out, it really was good at getting the fish fired up. But now the fish get so much pressure and they've seen it so much. Um, it does one of two things. I'll just put it like that. It either really fires them up or it seems to spook them. So. Once I've thrown pretty much everything else I got tied on, I'll pick that up and I'll give it a few casts. And sometimes if I can't get them to go, you know, I'm not getting, getting them on nothing else, I'll pick that up and it'll fire them up. And it catches some big fish. It really does. Uh, but like I said, it's one of the things I kind of save to the very end. Um, and I do like throwing some, you know, just kind of normal size spoons. I kind of almost feel like they don't see like a five or a six inch spoon anymore. Um, so a lot of times I will go with the, just a traditional, you know, five or six inch spoon, but, um, that's pretty much it. As far as depth range goes, you know, there's fish right now and, and, um, you know, as far as ledges go 10 foot, you know, them little shallower drops, you know, that six to 10 foot. And I mean, I've seen fish all, all the way out to 30, 33. So, I mean, there's fish on a lot of places on them ledges. Um, the, the deal with that is just understanding how the current works and how it hits them. Um, and uh, I will be going into that at, in my uh, fishing reports to come. And then, um, and, and if ledge fishing isn't your thing necessarily, there's other ways to catch them on Chickamauga. And that's the cool thing about Lake Chickamauga right now. They're, and, and really all year, you can fish your strengths. Um, there's a pretty good grass bite going right now. If you're grass fishing, I like just throwing a quarter ounce Texas rig, um, you know, with like a four odd EWG hook. Uh, like just a, something like that, just a Texas rig. Um, usually when I'm throwing it around grass, just, you know, 20 pound line, that's like a crawl style bait. I also love throwing like the, the 10 inch worm from Fishco, the, the curly tail worm, uh, usually plum or, you know, like a, um, something red, like a red bug, you know, red, red plum, something like that in the summer seems to always really excel, especially that 10 inch worm. It seems like in the summer, they're more willing to eat that big bait. Um, and then a, just a, like a half ounce chatter bait in the grass, just ripping it through that hydrilla, definitely a good way to catch some fish. And that's something I'll probably mix in a little bit throughout the month of June. As we get into July and August, I'll really dive into it. But, um, just, uh, like I said, chatter bait, um, and a Texas rig is kind of like my main two grass baits for this time of year. Now, as the grass keeps going, I'll throw some of those Yozuri pencil, Yozuri pencil poppers above it. But right now, um, Texas rig and chatter bait are kind of my two main two grass baits but uh yeah uh good luck in the water everybody like i said be sure to subscribe to um fishing for dummies i will leave the link in the bio and uh good luck in the water hope y'all catch a couple giants this month it's a fun time to be in lake chickamauga see y'all next time